<laughs> so um, here's what happened. Howie Roseman was on WIP yesterday, and he admitted that Tom Donahoe, former GM of the Steelers and the Bills, he wanted to stay put at, I believe it was 70, and take North Carolina State defensive tackle Alan McNeil. Right, right. The Eagles traded back three spots to pick up a sixth rounder, and McNeil was taken one spot earlier by the Lions. Right. So the Eagles were relegated to defensive tackle Milton Williams. Donahoe wanted McNeil, and Donahoe thought it was a waste of time, basically, to pick up the extra sixth-round pick. That was Jeff McClain's report from the Philadelphia Inquirer. So that that's the backstory. That's why the half-hearted fist bump and Tom Donahoe's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And why was it, huh? What? Huh? What? So that's what happened. And I, I like the transparency. Of course, what what can you do? It was caught on camera. You can't act like we were having a dispute about whether it was Diet Pepsi or regular Pepsi in the back of the room. Obviously, it was about whatever happened with that pick. So, uh, of course. how he had no choice but to be transparent and explain what happened, yeah, Chris. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, when there's nothing wrong with that, to just be transparent. It's okay. I mean, do we really think that it's just gonna, like every pick, there's going to be 10 men in a room and are all going to just be like, yes, that was the best pick we ever had. Of course not. There's going to be guys who are going to go, no, I think this guy would have been better. Blah, blah, blah. That's it's part of, you know, working in a front office. And if you have a healthy front office, you hopefully you do have a few guys that, you know, will say, no, I don't like this or challenge you on your thoughts a little bit and everything like that. Um, I, I will say to defend Tom Donahill, I, I'm, I agree with him. They missed out, I think, on a significantly better player to Aleem McNeil, who I thought was like one of the more special D tackles in the draft. And I'm sure Detroit was doing cartwheels to get him because, again, he's a, an ass kicker who dominates the line of scrimmage and bites kneecaps off. And that's all Detroit drafted in the draft. So he's a perfect fit for that. So I get that. Um, I did get a chickle, chuckle a little bit out of uh, Tom Donahoe's comments on the whole thing. Uh, him trying to put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste holder was pretty funny, too. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, what's amazing to me is – that Donahoe was mortified by this. It just shows you he is the classic old school football guy. Yeah, right. Because actually it reminded everyone that Tom Donahoe is still in the NFL. I'd say 99% of football fans just assumed that he wasn't. He got some free publicity. And his explanation to Chris Mortensen of ESPN does not ring true to most, I would say. <laughs> no. He's flabbergasted that it went viral. And he says, that's silly. I didn't even know I was on camera. Well, <laughs> That that we know. That's actually, why it was so yes. real. <laughs> that, <know>. Yes, <laughs> reality TV is only real if you don't know that you're on camera. Yeah, right. <laughs> when you know you're on camera, you behave differently. He wouldn't have been so half-hearted. He wouldn't have directed a comment at Howie Roseman that caused Howie to go, "What's your deal?" Essentially. So the fact that he didn't know it was on camera proves that it was a very real moment, and that he was frustrated, and he let it out. And he wouldn't have let it out if he had known he was on camera. Right. So it's okay. Own it. It is okay. Own, own exactly. It. That's own right. Own it. Right. Run with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it would be a shame if he ends up getting whacked over this. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously he's got to be concerned that there's going to be some sort of ramification because in that moment where he didn't realize that the cameras are everywhere and Tom and anyone else out there who's in a draft room or anywhere else really just assume a camera's everywhere – that, that's what happens yeah. when that, that real moment comes out. Yeah, well, hopefully nobody's going to judge him too critically there in the Eagles organization. It, it, I mean, Howie, it's not the first time. I'm sure he's had somebody in that room disagree with a pick or anything like that. So I, I hope it doesn't go that way. I do think, though, you're right. He was probably mortified by the whole thing, too. You know, it's old school personnel guy. And, you know, especially the old school, it's, hey, we, we follow leadership. It's file and rank, and I'm behind this guy, and whatever he says, yes, the sky's red. Okay, the sky's red. It's not blue. He, he said it's red. That's, that's the way front office works. So I'm sure he was embarrassed that way, that he kind of looked like, you know, revolutionary in a, in a degree that way. But, uh, yeah, it's all right. And like you said, just own it and, and move on. The last thing those old school guys want is to have their name in the paper, and they resent anyone yeah. who comes off as trying 
to seek publicity. That's why I think he was even more mortified. He came off as that guy that he's hated his entire career, the guy who's trying to get his name in the spotlight, usurp authority, and and be a show-off, be a fancy yeah. Dan. That's what my dad used to say, trying to be a fancy Dan there, get some attention. Oh, no, fancy Dan. I like it. it th th yeah, that was the thing back in the 70s. Yeah. I never knew what it meant, but I knew that that's, that's you know, you got to be very reserved. You got to be very under the radar. You got to go about your business and don't go out and seek that extra attention. So that was, uh, I think, another reason why Donahoe was trying to put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste holder. Here's Howie Roseman not trying to put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste holder as it relates to the move up from 12 to 10 to get in front of the Giants to get Devontae Smith, the guy that many thought the Giants would have taken. Here's Howie talking about that. When all these investigative stories had come out, saying that Howie Roseman has his own draft board and Howie Roseman sometimes follows Howie Roseman or Jeff Lurie's instincts instead of those of the coach or, or, the, or the coaches or the scouts. Did less of that happen this year? Can you that, that, shed a little light on that for us? Angela, that's ridiculous. Every single person on our staff has their own draft board. That's how we write up reports. So everyone in their system, Nick has his own draft board, Andy Weidel has their own draft board, Tom Donahoe has their own draft board, I have my own draft board. That's how we rank players. That's how our system is set up to do that. We have an Eagles draft board that reflects a lot of things, and my job is to bring them all together. I listen to everyone to try to make these decisions. And at the same time, someone may be unhappy because it may not be reflected accurately in all the information that I have that they may not have. And so I think that's the job uh, of everyone in my position around the league, and that's what's happening around the league. You know, I speak to a lot of GMs. I've been doing this for a long time. This, this isn't unique to the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, Howie, was there unanimous agreement on Devontae Smith? Yes. I just wanted to be sure. Yes. There's always a naysayer. You know, Howie, once in a while, a guy wants to go into the grain. Everybody loved Devontae. Cross the board. Everyone loves Devontae Smith. Angelo Cataldi and the WIP morning team. I don't know that Howie's going to hold up very well under questioning. I wasn't very convinced by the responses there. We're trying to get Howie on the program. We can talk to him a little bit more about that. But are you ever going to have unanimous opinion when you do something like that, when you give up assets to move up two spots to get a guy that you think your division rival is going to take, a guy who's 166 pounds? I, I would assume that someone in that group, there's too many people to have them all be unanimous that that was the right move, Chris. Yeah. And all that matters right is what Jeffrey Lurie ultimately wants because we learned one thing this year. He's a, a amateur Mel Kuyper, and he gets involved in the process, and he puts his board together, and if that's what the boss wants, that's what the boss gets. Well, yeah, all that matters is the top decision makers. And, of course, Roseman, Lurie, you know, maybe a few other guys that have got high positions within the organization, they're going to definitely – listen to them, their opinions are going to hold a little bit more weight. Yeah, what I think everybody in that room was totally like as just, you know, 100% happy Devontae Smith was their guy or whatever, probably not to your point. No, but again, Devontae Smith was every bit worthy of that pick. And when the only negative thing you can do say about the guy is 166. And I, and I will say too, you know, again, at pick 10, I, I know there's other teams out there that had Devontae Smith as their number one receiver, as one of the better receivers they've evaluated the last few years coming out in the draft. So there are teams that looked at him and probably scratched their head and were like, really, the Dolphins like Waddle more than him? Because I think there was a number of teams that looked at him and go, no, he's special. He's the guy that should be picked number one at receiver. Obviously, Howie felt that way, and we know there's some other teams out there that did too. And the benefit for Devontae Smith, because he was the third receiver taken, he'll have a little extra fuel to the fire. He'll have an extra incentive to prove the Bengals wrong at five and the Dolphins wrong, especially the Dolphins wrong at six for yeah. taking his teammate right. before they took the guy who was wrecking the Ohio State Buckeyes in the first half of the national championship game until he had that fluke finger injury that caused him to exit the rest of the game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.